what's good y'all welcome back to the channel if this is your first time on this channel or you've been coming back to this channel and you're not subscribed please be sure to hit that subscribe button man it really helped the channel out a lot we are on our way to 10k we uh we just hit 5k yesterday so we're on our way to 10,000 subscribers shout out to y'all i appreciate all the support but yeah man make sure y'all hit that subscribe button and also turn on those post notifications so you can be notified every time i drop a new banger now as y'all can tell by the description we're gonna be going over a load that I did. Um, these are gonna be two partial loads that I picked up and um, I was able to go there and back within about nine, nine and a half hours. And I made just shy of about $1,500. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So I picked this load up in Fort Worth uh, the day before and I ended up driving. I got up about four o'clock in the morning um, and I drove to uh, this little city called Shirts, Texas. It's just north of uh, San Antonio. And I ended up driving. It's about San Antonio is about San Antonio is about maybe like three, three and a half hours away. That's about 260 miles, so about three, three and a half hours away. And so I just woke up early because I was like, I want to be there first thing in the morning to drop this load off, get this thing signed, set, delivered. I noticed when I drop off in the mornings, there's like way less traffic, so I don't have to wait to be unloaded. I didn't get them actually loading everything up, but all this was was it was uh, some commercial grade, um, some commercial grade kitchen equipment. It weighed about six thousand pounds. Uh, took up a good portion of my truck. I want to say it took up the whole 26 feet, if I'm not mistaken. I think, yeah, I believe it took up the whole 26 feet. And they had the rate posted for $600. I ended up negotiating with them because the weather is terrible. Like, and I mean, look at this car crash. Like the weather was terrible the whole way there and the whole way back. But we'll get into that a little bit later. But um, I ended up letting them know like, hey, yo, the weather's bad here, I'm not, sure where you at but if you look up like it's it's terrible you know and that's why a lot of people ain't taking these loads and doing this and doing that because i believe um i believe they had it there all day and i just kind of noticed it and i was like hey can i is it too late to pick this up and it was like well if you can get there by 5 30 they'll go ahead and load you up so but i ended up negotiating with them so instead of 600 dollars, i ended up getting 750 out of this deal 750 dollars so uh, when I dropped it off, everything went smooth. Um, I was literally the first one there and I was able to drop off at 8 a.m. I was, I think I got there at like 7.30, but I was literally able to drop off at 8 a.m. Nobody else was there and they, they were like literally just pulling up the gates at the docks and I was like, perfect. So that worked out perfectly. The second load, I ended up finding that while I was waiting for this, um, this load to be unloaded. I found the second load, it was um, it was actually about 20 miles away, which is a blessing, and it was going back to Dallas, um, actually Grand Prairie, Texas, which is about 20 minutes away from where I actually live. So I was like, that's a that's, that's a player, that's gonna take me straight to the house. I wanna explain the process of picking up food here. Now this was a Fiesta warehouse, and I was gonna be hauling drinks. It was like a little, like basically cans of soda, like boxes of soda, cans of soda. So when I got there, it was like a crazy long line. Um, they wasn't letting people inside of their warehouse because you know it's food and of course with COVID and all the other type of stuff. So uh, basically they just had a number on the door. I called that number and they said, okay, hey, when a spot opens up, we'll call you back. So just wait on the street or you know wait somewhere close nearby and I'll call you back with the dock number. Cool, I think I waited maybe maybe like 15 minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes, and they ended up calling me back. And so I drove to the door, uh, the dock that they wanted me to pull up to, bagged in, let them know uh, what I was here to pick up. Again, this was only four pallets. Each pallet weighed 2,000 pounds, and um, so that was 8,000 pounds total. And yeah, the dude was taking so long to actually load me I just went and found a pallet jack and I just loaded it all myself because I, I guess there was some kind of issue or discrepancy with the semi next to me with that he was loading up and I guess um, the semi, I guess they, they must've got their paperwork confused or something. They was working that out and I was like, bro, I really ain't got time for this type of shit. So I went and asked one of the forklift drivers for a pallet jack, found the pallet jack and I loaded everything myself. 
That shit was heavy. I tell you that much. It was it was really heavy. But for Tom's sake, I was like, I needed to, you know, I needed to go ahead and get this get this done and get this out of the way. One thing I noticed is, and I'm not for sure if this is just with food or just how Fiesta does it, and but they gave me like this little red tag to tie around where I would normally put my lock at. And I guess just to know if it's been tampered with or if anybody's been in the trailer. But this is my issue with that, right? So my issue is, what if I found another partial? Was I just supposed to cut that off? So, I mean, if you guys know how that's supposed to work, can y'all drop it in the comments below? Um, if they give you like a little tag to put around your lock. Um, you know, the dude literally sat there and watched me. He gave me the, uh, the tag and so I clipped it around and so he just like, okay, cool. And then that's when he signed my, uh, my BL. He gave him the BL and everything and he signed it. So I'm just like, you know, what if I want to pick up some more freight? Like how would, like how does that necessarily work? But nonetheless, I was able to pick that up. Now for this load, they had it posted for $650 going back to, uh, going back to Dallas. And I was able to negotiate this load for $725. And remember, this is all in the same day. We're talking about four hours. I dropped that off. I came and picked up the other one, got loaded up, and I just headed straight back to Dallas. I made it literally just in time. I want to say I made it just at, like, when their docking hours were closing. I, I want to say I made it just at, like, it was like their dock hours were like at three. It was like eight to three. So I made it there. I made it there like right around like maybe two something. It was like just after lunch. Took maybe 20 to 30 minutes for them to um, find me a spot at the dock. And then it took them another maybe like <laughs> five minutes just to unload me. A uh, dude was actually on an electronic uh, pallet jack. So it, just, it makes everything way quicker. I was way more comfortable with that too because I didn't want you know, somebody driving that forklift onto my truck because y'all be on my ass about it in the comments, so. Overall though, you know, this is a this is a dream day. I mean, I did the numbers too. So this came out to like $2.83 a mile. You really can't beat that. To break this down for people that want to get into trucking, but right now you're like on an hourly type of mindset. This broke down to about, from the time of me leaving to the time I dropped off my final load and I was headed home, I probably did about nine, nine and a half hours of like work and that's like on the road time. I don't count my, you know, my lunch and stuff like that. This literally breaks down to about $155 an hour. $155 and 26 cents an hour to be exact. I feel like I'm getting paid doctor money to be real with you. Now, of course we got to pay the fuel. I mean, and of course the operations the operations costs, you know, just to operate the business and take out for insurance, the truck note, and all that other good stuff. But I mean, overall that, I mean, it's an idea. Like you find loads like that is A1, especially you can negotiate the hell out of partials. You can negotiate partials for sure. Last thing I want to talk about is my challenges. The biggest challenge, the biggest challenge on this, on this whole trip was the weather. Like, bro, it was raining like crazy off and on. And I'm gonna put the clips in now. But like the rain just didn't like, and it would stop like just in enough time for me to get loaded and unloaded. But then like just traveling from Austin or from San Antonio back to Dallas, like the rain was crazy. And I mean, anybody in the DFW, y'all know like these last two, three weeks, like we've been getting rain nonstop. That's what made me go to Atlanta because I was just like, I don't want to drive in this. So typically guys, when you're dealing with that type of inclement weather, and I mean, I've seen two big accidents involving semis. And so, you know, what are y'all's, what are y'all suggestions or like, what are y'all comfortable with, you know, when it comes to driving, you know, in these inclement weather, do y'all like pull over? Do y'all, you know, just kind of tough it out? Cause I mean, outside of my first week uh, doing the box trucks and stuff like that, you know, if y'all haven't seen that video, uh, check it out right here. But you know, that first, I kind of, I felt like I was driving through a damn tornado, but 
you know, you see Transformers blow and all that type of stuff, but as if it's like, as long as it ain't that bad, do y'all just be like, all right, cool, we'll just kind of slow roll it. But I just want to make sure I'm safe. Um, I really don't like driving in rain like that just because it's just, there's some extra shit that can happen. And not only to me as a driver, but you got other people around you, you got to worry about too. So, I mean, just some food for thought, man. And just to like, let you guys know the people that are thinking about getting into box trucks, this is a part of the game. Like you're going to have to deal with weather. And this is summertime or spring going into the summer. That's not including the winter, you know? So um, winter time should be very interesting, a very interesting time. But that's my final thought, man. So we, we really killed this load. Um, I'm able to go do that and come back home, chill, uh, you know, spend the night at home, not over the road. So yeah, man, just let me know, guys. Uh, I got a phone call coming in. But yeah, just let me know if y'all got any questions or anything like that. Also too, what I'm gonna be doing is from here on out, if y'all go to my description, I'm going to start leaving, um, I don't know what I'm gonna call it, but I'm gonna start leaving all the information as far as um, like my finance company, the company that helps set my, uh, that does my dot compliance. Um, and pretty much anything else, I'm gonna start permanently leaving that stuff in the description. So go down to the description, um, you know, open it up and then it should be there. And I'll make sure that it's uh, clearly marked and listed. And that's the description is the one that has, uh, is the thing that has like my social media and all that stuff. So yeah, be sure to do that. If y'all haven't already, follow me on Instagram, it's lit. And uh, yeah, man, y'all be safe out there. I hope everybody learned something. If not, <laughs> I hope you found some value in this video and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Peace.